Facebook people out there on YouTube and Facebook land. I hope you're having a great day this Monday. We're not normally here on Monday. We're normally here on Sunday, but I was not here on Sunday because I was doing something else. And so we're doing a makeup show. So we are glad that you can join us here. This is the Demetri K Show where we promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even. Like I said, big giant thank you to the recovering Democrat, also known as Donovan Sadiq, as my partner in crime, as we sit here every Sunday and Monday and every other day. Also like to thank YouTube and Facebook for being the other side of the conversation. This is probably the only show that reads each and every comment, question, or concern because not only you viewers, but you are participants as well, and your voice matters here. Also like to thank Marcus Guyton for everything he does behind the scenes on Facebook and making the show go further. So we're going to have a conversation about the Super Bowl that took place yesterday and it took place in Inglewood, California, and a whole lot of other things went on. And so before we get into that, Donovan, what say you? All right, you guys, do, do us a favor. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button and share this on your platforms because this is some important information that you guys need to uh, know about. Because like I said, nothing against uh, Super Bowl, nothing against capitalism. It's a great, great system, so they say. But you got to know what you're talking about before you talk about it. Uh, Demetri kind of calls this episode Donovan's Rant because earlier this morning, I went on a tangent against a lot of people who were talking the BS. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And again, if you are not from a certain area and you don't know the, the, the specifics of what is going on in that area, how the hell do you have an opinion on what's going on? Didn't we tell you about Kamala Harris? But there were so many people, ooh, Kamala gonna do this, Kamala gonna do that. But nobody knew this woman's exact record. So do us a favor, please like, share, and subscribe, not only on your platform, but other platforms. Let's get the message out. And again, uh, Demetra, thank you for having me on the show. And let's get into it. All right. So as I said a minute ago, we are going to talk about the Super Bowl and really it's the hidden costs of the Super Bowl. As you guys know, as I said yesterday, the Super Bowl was a 56th uh, annual, if you will, Super Bowl where the best teams from the AFC and the NFC, they get together and they have um, some sort of a championship, if you will. And so it was the Cincinnati Bengals and the L.A. Rams uh, played in the L.A. Rams won. I think it was 23 to 20. L.A. Rams, uh, L.A. had not had a team, I guess it was about 20 years or so. And so they got to play at the newly fashioned SoFi Stadium that costs $5.5 billion. And they put a smack dab in the middle of Inglewood. It used to be a racetrack. And they spent a whole lot of money, as you can see, behind Donovan. It is a very impressive structure there. And so... Um, as you guys know, a lot of celebrities showed up. The cheapest tickets were around $3,000 or so. So just anybody couldn't get in there. We're going to have a conversation around that. But some of the hidden costs of the Super Bowl include that of gentrification and, uh, you know, um, rent increases for the uh, people who live around there. It is said that um, in 2016, the average rent for a one bedroom apartment was $1,100. And now it is almost $1,800 for that very same apartment. Now behind me, as you may see, it's a lovely house, I would say. Right. And so how much would you think a house like that is worth anywhere? Probably, I don't know if you can see, it's not that big of a house. In fact, it's a, um, it's called it's a snap shack house. Yeah, it's 1,008 square feet. So 1,000 square feet is what the house behind me um, is going for. And I looked inside of this house and it is jacked up, right? I don't know what happened to it, but it's jacked up. Well, guess how much it's going for? It's going for over a million dollars, almost eight hundred thousand dollars for this thousand square foot home. And it is about five miles away from the SoFi Stadium. So a couple of years ago, this particular house in Inglewood probably would have cost, I don't know, I'm going to say four hundred thousand dollars, because let's be honest, it is expensive to live in Los Angeles. Now, Inglewood was said to be one of the last 
least expensive neighborhoods to live in in California. But when the SoFi Stadium came, that changed everything. Donovan and I actually have been talking about what the SoFi Stadium was going to do to the people who lived in that neighborhood years ago when they was talking about building it. And we talk about the story all the time. There was one particular gentleman. His rent was $900. And when the SoFi Stadium came in, it went up to almost $3,000. Now, while LA has some form of rent control, a lot of times the uh, landlords, they circumvent those laws by going through loopholes and things like that. And so they either sell the property or boost the rent and, and people have to move out and then they rent it or sell it for higher prices and all of that. And so it has really done a number on black people. Now, black people used to be the most uh, in population in Inglewood, but it's not anymore. It's Hispanics and then black people. But nevertheless, um, a lot of people were hurt by that. Um, and as I said, I mean, we're going to have a long conversation about this, but it's more to it than just a celebration of these two football teams, you know, getting together. It's it's a lot involved and it actually harms a lot of people. And in some cases, causing the homeless population to rise even more due to uh, structures like the one that's behind Donovan via the SoFi Stadium. And so we're going to call this Donovan's rant because Donovan, you know, he put up a post in regards to his opinion about the Super Bowl halftime, which, you know, I'm from the West Coast. So I was cool. And, you know, Donovan's from the West Coast, too. Um, I love the performance of, you know, the halftime Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and all. I, I, I really loved it. He didn't like it. So anyway, some people well, got no, on. I didn't say I didn't like it. I said it was okay. He said it was okay. So okay. some people got on there and basically even told him that you're wrong for having that opinion and all hell broke loose. And you guys might've seen Donovan's rant before this. And I was like, okay, brother, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just get it all off your chest, brother. So we're going to get to the comments and then Donovan is going to tell us why he was so passionate about this uh, subject. And so who do we have here? Mr. Piper Brain, how you doing? He says, peace, family. And Tracy, what's going on with you? You say, welcome, family. Black first. And Moni, how you doing, Miss Hunt? You say, you didn't let us know that you wasn't. I did. I put it, I put it on the community tab, but I apologize. He says, you didn't let us know that you wasn't going to be on. And I wish I could have had um, your own. But because of Super Bowl Sunday, I knew Donovan wasn't going to be around for you, Demetri. I miss you both. <laughs> no, it wasn't Donovan at all. We just decided... Let's, you know, move it to today because yeah, we just wanted to see if more people would be here and give people a day off. And so yeah, Donovan was not watching. The, I didn't watch the football yeah, game. It wasn't because of Donovan. And, and Ben, how you doing? He says, hey, what's up, Dean Donovan? I got one thing to say. Jay-Z partnering with the NFL was a joke. Halftime was nice. Was that why uh, we were uh, past nearly? Well, come on, brother. Me and you, you and I have this conversation a lot, Ben. And, of course, we know Jay-Z was going in there to grease his pockets even more. He has not made any changes in regards to racism. Of course, they put little things, you know, in the end zone, in racism. And they had all the black people you can think of. seen the National Anthem at America. And beautiful. I like Janae, you know, Iko, but you know, they had all these black people doing all these black things and they had Mary Mary singing the Negro national anthem and so, but that's, that doesn't change anything, right? Doesn't change <laughs> anything. <laughs> it doesn't change what has happened to black people and still happening to black people, right? right. So you say, uh, yeah, so he said we were past kneeling. Clearly it wasn't because Eminem took a knee, a, a knee for a very long time to really drive the point home. And so NIE's how you doing? He says, Shalom family. And Thunder, what is going on with you? And Monday says, I'm digging the frog. I like when you wear it. It is curly. Uh, I'll see you a little. Um, a lip gloss wear is the red <laughs> rat raspberry lipstick. Your signature even pink today for Valentine's Day. Oh, it is Valentine's Day, huh? Huh? <laughs> The humbug, I'm just playing. <laughs> and uh, J Blade 24, how you doing? He says, uh, hi, brothers. Okay. Wilbur, how you doing? And you also say, peace from Jersey, uh, J Blade. And you also say, how are you guys doing? Fam, we are doing fabulous. Hey, Tisha, I see that you were having a great old time this weekend. Um, was it your birthday? Well, I'm not sure it's your birthday, but it, it, whenever I look at your post, it's like it's your birthday all the time. So it's hard to tell. <laughs> Kimmy, what's going on with you? Says happy day. Yes. And Valentine's Day. Yes, indeed. Robin, long time. No, see how you doing? They also say teacher, same thing that happened here in New York with the Barclays Center. And about to do it again in Inglewood with uh, the new Clippers Stadium. And Thunder, you said they put out an article stating that the rent in Houston, um, Houston 28% over a few years. Oh, and psh, it's going to go up even more so. And I, and I says, I'm not a hip hop fan. And Moni says, um, 
for all the millions that they spent yesterday, it could have helped many people that are homeless in shelters and then underprivileged areas that are, these people are very selfish. Um, Donovan, did you win? And then Don, how you doing? Says, hey, Demetri and Donovan. And teacher says, Donovan was talking about the economics. It's insane that they were char- what they were charging. I was in Vegas and they were charging $1,600 to watch the Super Bowl and sports bars. No thanks, really? And Trey says, Donovan's dancing is so silly, crazy. And he says, my birthday is Wednesday. I celebrated early. Got it. Yes, that's what I thought. So happy early birthday to you, 49 forever. And uh, Robin says, I'm great. How are y'all? We're doing well. And Black Beauty MD says, I think the halftime show was mediocre at best. And you know, and that's your opinion. Everybody's entitled to your opinion. And Aaron, how you doing? He says, and let's not forget, Byron Allen is trying to buy Denver Broncos. So I didn't know that. All right. And you're welcome, teacher. So what, what say you, Don? What, what, get it off your chest, man. What's, what's happening? <laughs> Well, it's nothing that is all off my chest. The thing is, you've got people in the new black media that keep putting these alarms out way ahead of the time, because I think it was last week where I posted what the tickets were going for just to attend the Super Bowl. And if you guys saw my rant, you can go to my Facebook page. You can see me uh, ranting there. And what I was saying is it's about economics. It's about economics. We are funding our own oppression. Now, ask yourself this, if you really think about it. You have rich millionaires. The only people that can afford to have attended the Super Bowl are people of means and money. Now, I have some friends that said, well, there was a few blacks in there. There was uh, some. You can't take 10,000 white people, throw in three black people and say, see, integration. You guys sound like white supremacists. OK, and I'm talking to my friends that had said that. You sound like a white supremacist when, when, you, when you did that. It is said in the United States. You want me to tag them in this video? Yeah, no. Well, yeah, go ahead and tag them. Uh, it is said in the United States that most Americans that do not have means don't even have $400 in case of an emergency. Do you guys remember Sandra Brown? You guys remember her? She couldn't find anybody to give her $400 so she could make bail. Okay? Those tickets prices were outlandish. But regardless of that, it does not matter how much you know about economics. My thing is this. When the taxpayers are funding a building... And it's used taxpayer dollars. That is not capitalism. That is corporate socialism. So you mean to tell me the median tax base of the people that are in this stadium's area couldn't even afford to attend a game for a building that they paid for? And you're not outraged by that? It's totally ridiculous. But see, we love... Rich people. We love giving money to rich people. And then these are the same people that are go around here talking about gas is too high, rent's too high, this is that, uh, 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 the white man, whatever deal is. It's economics. It's economics. All I'm saying is, how did a oligarch was able to build a $5 billion stadium in a predominantly black neighborhood? Why aren't they, since these, these rich people are rich, why aren't they building these stadiums in their neighborhoods? How come nobody's asking that question? Who, who actually paid for the stadium? Well, it was a, it was a, uh, it, it's really complicated how they do it. But uh, yes, the owner paid some of it. But a lot of it incentivizing and all that stuff, it still came out to tax dollars at the end of the day. And it said within a, a couple of years or so, the football owners are going to make what is a hundred million dollars off of you know the stadium and all that. So it was really a win for them. You know, what I mean, yeah, it was a drop in the bucket. And what's his name? The, uh, the owner, Crunky, or whatever his name is, he's worth ten billion dollars, and so he is also they say a big time Trump supporter, which is neither here nor there to me. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it just. And you got to remember, okay, the owner of the Rams, he owns the stadium, but he he leases and rents out to the Chargers. So he's getting money from the Charger base, all kinds of stuff that's going on. They got shops in the stadium. They've got all kinds of like renters in the stadium that pay him rent on taxpayer funded building that some of our money went to fund. And that's what I'm telling you. Your economics mean nothing when the taxpayer pay it. Don't tell me about capitalism. When some of my tax paying dollars go into a building and I can't even attend or have access to that building. Right. And, you know, um, and, and speaking of which, it, it, a lot of that money was taxpayers money. And, 
you know, the average person who would go to a football game could not get into that football game. Now, when I say average person, I mean an average person, a person earning, you know, um, an average wage, if you will, right? So the everyday people who uh, make those owners and the football players and all them rich, they couldn't get into that game yesterday. They couldn't afford to, you know, buy those tickets. And like I was saying to somebody earlier, let's say you were going out of town, to, you were uh, traveling out of town to go to the game, you'd have to, you know, pay for airfare, uh, to, if the tickets, the nose believes was around three thousand dollars. Say you want to go with somebody, that's six thousand dollars. Plus, you need to rent a car, which is very expensive. Gas is expensive in LA, and Airbnb and a hotel, all that stuff was going to go up, not including the money he was going to spend in there. I mean, that's a pretty penny. So that was only, you know, really afforded to the the wealthy and people who had the money to go and experience that. But everyday people is who uh, makes those owners and people like that rich. Let me get to you guys' comments and then. Um, We'll continue on here. And Moni says, uh, Demetra, uh, sometimes raggedy dumps can rent out for millions. That's um, what they did here in Detroit. Now you got crooked politicians that only defend other crooks to eradicate blacks out. Yep. And we help them do it by continuing to vote for oppression. And again, that area is Aunt Maxine's area. That thing was built in her district and she's been silent. And a black mayor, uh, Mayor Butts, he uh, co-signed the whole thing to the mayor of uh, Inglewood. He co-signed every step of the way, not caring about the residents at all. I mean, in fact, in uh, one meeting, <clears throat> he uh, was talking very badly about a lady who came up to the mic to express her displeasure uh, with what was going on. And... He said something like, yeah, uh, she can shut up or shove it or something, but it was on a hot mic. It's like, oops, tell us how you really feel. Yep. And then Moni also said, and real quick, and you guys got to realize if properties were public domain so that this oligarch could build the stadium, you don't think that's a problem? You don't think that's a problem that you are forcing me to sell my property at market value at the time. Because remember, we did this years ago when they started all this. So you gave me $350,000, $450,000 for my property. Like you said, that little uh, snack crack house behind you is now worth $800,000, $900,000. Some of these properties that were supposed to go into the benefit of the stadium went to developers who started building loft apartments worth millions of dollars. Where did the black people go? Right. <clears throat> and so let me get to the comments. And Moni says, what's another day you're going to be on the air, Demetri? So Sundays always will be on live. But then, of course, you know, we'll do a podcast on our Tuesdays and Saturdays and upload them. And David Joseph, thank you so much. I really love and appreciate you for your donations. Uh, and you say, I'm going to put this up here. I'm not paying $5,000 or more for no doggone tickets <laughs> to a football game. Wherever, um, he says, I decide to watch football. I'd be on my 32-inch uh, be on my 32-inch um, flat screen TV at home. Keep up the great content, y'all. And thank you so much. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean. Right. And, and, and then, David, they're not even talking about the invasion of the 304s we had coming out down here to get the bag. I mean, they're not talking about the the, the uh, residual things that were going on because in L.A. County, they do not uh, arrest prostitutes for prostitution. They only arrest the Johns. And um, I think Adrian Peterson was recently arrested on a plane or something for assault or something. He was a football player. As you guys know, he was a uh, former MVP in the NFL. I mean, there was an influx. I called Demetri. When did I call you? Friday or Saturday? And I happened to notice there was all these people I had never seen in my city. I live in the Inland Empire. We live in the Inland Empire. And Demetri made a, a good point. She said there ain't no hotels available right now for people who want to, you know, stay close to the stadium. They've got to come out to the Inland Empire. And we had a bunch of 304s. I saw license plates from Las Vegas, from Phoenix, from San Francisco, from San Diego. They all came here, and then Saturday night, they all went toward uh, the NFL stadium where all the parties were going on, and God knows what was going on with that. Absolutely. And Robin, you say it's ridiculous, $3,000 for a freaking ticket when you can watch it on TV for free. Well, you know, people have that whole FOMO fear of missing out. I got to be there. I might see Jay-Z or Beyonce or whoever the case is, but yeah. Ain't no I can't way. get me a ball player sitting at home. Oh, God. And in a way, I would have spent nowhere near that kind of money to go watch two, I mean, people run up and down a field. How many people, think about this, you guys, economics. 
How many of you guys right now have $3,000 and you're taking your spouse, your significant other? That's $6,000. That's just the ticket. We ain't talking about parking. We ain't talking about all the food and all that other stuff that, that you're going to have to pay for, right? So you mean to tell me you're going to pay damn near $15,000 for a couple of hours? How many of you guys got money like that to throw, to throw around? And Marty says, I would love to pick up a uh, pick up a time on a slow day like today to uh, to meet you. If I think you meant Demetra, if you and Donovan can talk, because a lot of those uh, issues are happening right here in Detroit, where elected officials get elected BS. Well, just let me know when. I mean, I'm waiting on you, Moni. Honey, do how you doing? And uh, Moni says, I'm surprised my gorgeous, handsome brown sugar is mad. Somebody finna get a beat down for making my lovely brown sugar man. I'm surprised, I'm mad. I think. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't go, Donovan. I know you would have wanted um, a winning team. Well, I supported the Rams. I mean, I didn't, you know, there was no need to go because, like I said, if you, you know anything about L.A. traffic on a regular day, you think about going down there during the Super Bowl? Oh, my gosh, no. Robin says, that's robbery. Yes, indeed. And Thunder says, why are we uh, always on the short end of the stick? Do we get tired of this? You also say, we keep complaining about capitalism, how much is harming us. Well, let us use it as a weapon like everyone else does. Well, to answer your first question, we are always on the short end of the stick because we continue to vote for oppression. As Donovan said, Auntie Maxine Waters, I should call her representative Maxine Waters, she, that is her district, the 43rd district. And um, she, like, she has some issues with the financing of it. But, you know, did she really raise hell about what it was going to do to the constituents? Or what about the city council? I'm sure a lot of them are probably black and the mayor is black. So, you know, they keep getting elected to do it. And guess who elects them? We elect them to do that. And so we got to get past people like Maxine Waters saying, I'm claim my time. And, you know, we think she's really doing something. But yet it's, it's actually harming us in the long run. David, you say Auntie Maxine probably got to cut off the profits. Yeah, I'm sure she did. You know, they like to sl slide them that white envelope. And uh, Martin says, Donovan, I assume since you're always glued to the screen for football, I just assume you want um, it off to celebrate whatever your friends or family for the Super Bowl Sunday. It's a brunch. It's, I'm sorry. It's a bunch of nonsense. And Sean, how you doing? He says, that is crazy. They all... Um, they get all that taxpayer money, yeah, and, and they try to. It, it, it's just it's awful. And brother Todd, how you doing? It says peace, uh, Donovan and Demetra. You look absolutely stunning. If I celebrated Valentine's Day, you would be mine, and I would be yours. But since I don't, you are still mine, and I'm still yours anyway. <laughs> Crip walking at the Super Bowl, hell yeah, best halftime show ever. <laughs> well, Todd, thank you for that. I appreciate that, but you know, I'm not. No, I'm joking with you. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. Um, I, I, that made me really feel good. So I appreciate you, brother, for that. But yeah, I was, you know, I wanted to crip walk too, and I saw that. I was like, they holding it down for Southern California, which is where I'm from. So I, I, I agree. I thought it was the best halftime show too. But you know, that's our opinion. And Robin says that's insane. And teacher says gentrification. How can you say that was the best halftime show and DJ Quick did not perform? Because it was an homage to Dr. Dre. He worked with Dr. Dre on, on, death, on death Row Records. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know why he didn't pick DJ Quick, but he did pick some pretty cool people, you know, Snoop Dogg. I raised, I raised my nieces on DJ Quick. I mean, if anything that, that they learned from Uncle, you, you roll in your car with some DJ Quick, some West Coast g -Bunk. <laughs> Leather and luxury cars. How you doing? He says, hey, y'all been super busy. Glad to finally have time to tune back in. Yes, indeed. You busy making all that money. I ain't mad at you. And he also says, sad people rather spend all this money on a damn slave match <laughs> instead of feeding or housing people. And the other part of that, too, I'm glad you brought that up. Is you know usually when a big event comes into a city, usually it's downtown or you know where the rich people aren't. You know, and, you know it wasn't in the Beverly Hills or anything like that. They like to shovel the homeless people somewhere. Like we don't care where you go, just get out of here. And usually they'll bust them to other places and just completely get the rid of them. Empire. Yeah, they'll get rid of them because they don't want the money that's coming to town to see that or be bothered by the panhandling and all of that. And so it, it's just horrible what they do to everyday people for one day. You know what I mean? And um, Moni says, but I'm not surprised over the money part. A lot of people are whining about it. Uh, what would you expect? It's so uh, pandemic. And then you're going to play a higher I think it may pay higher because the inflation, let's get real total ripoff. Well, you know, here's my thing real quick, you guys. 
what I'm upset about, it's not the fact that the stadium is built and it's how it was done and the people that were displaced. It was people that looked like me. How can you guys, if you look black, sit there and be like, Woo, yeah, the football and you know, the game is the game. I'm not mad. Dr. Dre, billionaire, he's out there performing. Snoop just purchased death row records. I'm all for that. But how in good conscience can you sit there knowing that a whole group of black families were displaced and gentrified out of an area just so oligarchs can see their gladiators perform? Okay, and I want to say this, too, because I get what you're saying as far as, you know, Dr. Dre and them should not do A, B, C and D. But and you don't have to answer this. I just want everybody to kind of think about this and we can talk about a little bit later. Why are we putting the onus on Dr. Dre and them when it's Dr. Dre and them are not the ones, you know, by themselves that are responsible for that? What about us that continuously voting a vote for people who harm us? Because Dr. Dre and them performing at the Super Bowl is really right. like a small right. part of the equation. The biggest part of the equation is we continue to vote for those people who do those things to us. So just, I just want to think yeah. about that. Yeah, no, I don't want anybody to misconstrue. I'm not saying I have a problem with Dr. Dre or Snoop doing all that. That isn't what I'm saying. They're doing their thing. They're with their fellow billionaires and millionaires. That, that's fine. I have no problem with that. The problem I have is people use the Dr. Dre and Snoop performance to deflect from the issue of the economics in that area. I have no issue with Dr. Dre and them doing, they're entertainers. That's what they do. You do your thing. It's the fact of the matter that this stadium was built and whole families were dislodged and displaced because of gentrification. So let me clarify that. Got it. So uh, to Hyrie, and I hope I said that right. How you doing? He says stadiums, stadiums, golf courses, public use is non-existent in many areas. Huge water use and huge waste of space are stadiums, golf courses, waterfront, a way uh, for rich white people to get richer. Absolutely. Yeah. And right there in front of SoFi Stadium is a waterfall and all of that. So and, and we in a drought and we in a drought. Right. Yeah. California is always in a drought. And Thunder says six thousand uh, dollars. We can get us an investment property or if you want to splurge, that's a tour to Europe. Yeah. And uh, Robert says, no, I'm not paying three thousand dollars and uh, hope to see Jay-Z or nobody else. <laughs> I need all my coins. And teacher says not spending that kind of money on sports. No way. I'd rather travel somewhere instead. Absolutely. And Abbott, how you doing? He says it's funny. All the money generated over a game that is decided from the start. Hmm. The games are fixed, family. You're probably right. As we've been hearing a lot about it with the Brian Flores debacle, if you will. And TM1, how you doing? It says, greetings, diaspora family. Yes, indeed. And one who cares, just says, greetings, uh, Demetra and Donovan, and hello to you. And David, he says, Los Angeles, California has the 5 uh, a.m. Pacific time traffic sometimes, ooh, all the time. Says, I've been stuck in that traffic in an 18-wheeler. It can be rough. You have to you have to always plan two hours out here in Southern California. I don't care what time of day it is. And, you know, you're a trucker and that's great. We have so many trucks that is like it takes 25 minutes for me to leave my city because we have a wall of trucks. You can't even get on the freeway because the wall of trucks won't even let you in. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And Marty says, Donovan, I'm with you. Um, I only see a few blacks that were there who uh, were mostly always famous or some well-known senator, a senator uh, things like that. But it's their money. Let him waste it. It's Valentine's Day. And uh, Robin says, with all the homelessness and unemployment going on in this country, the Super Bowl game was a, sh- a scam on taxpaying citizens. Yep. I mean, it's like, how do you justify it, right? Hey, Kiki, how you doing? It says, hey, Queen Demetra and Sir Donovan. Is it true that tickets were uh, up to like $20,000? I heard it on the uh, radio Saturday. I think it was more expensive than that in some places. In if you were on the 50-yard line, it was like $50,000 and mm-hmm. so on. It was gone. It was, I mean, you got to have it. If you didn't have it, you ain't got no business there. And I know Kanye spent about over $2 million uh, buying tickets for his Donda's foundation for, you know, families so they can attend. And so it sounds like some of the tickets he paid for was like $50,000 as well. And uh, Martin says, Demetri, what did you get today for Valentine's Day? No beautiful girl should be without flowers, candy, Don, Perignon, jewelry. But sometimes it may not always be the case, right? Um, I, I didn't get anything, but you know what? I woke up today. So that's, it's always a gift to me. <laughs> I, do not, I do not know how you could fix your mouth and say you didn't get anything. I just gave you a credit limit to go and do with your... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, you, you, you're right. Um, Donovan, um, you know, I, I, I don't think Donovan is enough. Uh, Donovan is really always looking out for me, but he uh, did send not just me, but um, my daughter, a credit card, uh, with, I, I don't know if the, what the limit is on it, 
Um, but it's really for business purposes and to travel. But you know, he did do that, nevertheless. So I am everybody that. watching. She just admitted she's an employee of mine. So in case we have to go into litigation, it, <laughs> it is. <laughs> So that was much appreciated. Thank you. And Al, how you doing? He says Ice Cube, I think you meant, should have been there. <laughs> um, for what I understand, and um, uh, I can't remember who it was that said it. It's going to come back to me. But anyway, they said that I guess Ice Cube was never under Dr. Dre. He was under uh, Public Enemy's um, uh, record label, whatever it is. And so that money wouldn't have, it would have, I guess, gave money to Public Enemy, and he was never under Dr. Dre. So that's why. One of the reasons uh, yeah, the why publishing is there. that's why publishing and music is so important, right? So that that was why, and I'm going to remember who said that in just a second. And let's see here. And David says, "Sorry, I meant three to four a.m. traffic time." Okay, yeah, great city, scenic views of the mountains, but you will learn to be a patient driver out there. Yeah, I, I don't miss that at all of Southern California. Dave, I, I'm not a patient driver. I went and got a scooter. I can get around faster on a scooter than being in my car. Absolutely. And let's see here. Robert says money, money, money. Yes, indeed. And Thunder says, speaking of Super Bowl teams, what are you guys thinking about the two biggest teams in the world about to play another theater, uh, play on another theater, a theater of war that is the U.S. and Russia? So Donovan can speak more to that. Well, than I can. Um, again, that is another scare tactic. And have you guys seen the movie Wag the Dog? Whenever a president's poll numbers are in the damn toilet. And you're giving black people the middle finger and it's this low numbers and you can't do anything. They do a, a, a war scare and, you know, because everybody's patriotic. They want to get behind the president and all this other stuff. So total bullshit. Nothing's going to happen because guess what? If you're going to attack America, what, what's the best time to attack us? During the Super Bowl. And uh, so it was MC Spice actually has said that I'm actually friends with him on Facebook and he obviously, you know, knows the ins and the outs of, you know, the record industry, especially on the West Coast. And so it was uh, MC Spice who said that. And uh, let's see here. And Sean, how you doing? He says, I didn't even watch the game. Did you watch the, suit, the halftime show? And David says, it makes me wonder where they move the homeless people to as well. Yeah, they just play. Uh, what is that? A three card Molly with them. They shuffle them around, and, you know, to hide them from the, the, the wealthy people. Right. Yeah, Force them in the hotels because the, uh, the city is giving vouchers uh, for hotels and stuff and put them in the motels. And they ship them out to where I live, Inland Empire. They stay out here for a couple of weeks and they go back. That, that's what they do. They've been doing that for years. Yeah, they just go back and forth in leather and luxury cars. It says agrees is not enough. Um, it's enough to make you sick. And the Little Caesar Arena here in Detroit did the same thing. Yeah, they're all notorious for doing that. Martin says, Donovan is just like um, in Michigan. You got the images that tore down Joe, Joe Lewis Arena, uh, which was my third cousin. Let's be clear, by way of marriage, they're building up all of downtown Detroit. Yeah, it's going to come back even stronger, but it won't be for the people who used to could live there, right? The Leather Luxury Car says that was one of the poorest parts of downtown. Now it's um, all luxury BS and a new stadium that sat empty for nearly two years. That's sad. And Thunder said six thousand dollars for a ticket. That's a lot of bean and rice, <laughs> beans and rice, just in case World War Three starts. Absolutely. And, and, and just think about this, you guys. And like I said, I have nothing against the NFL. I have nothing against what transpired. We are three years into a so-called pandemic. How many people have lost their jobs and or had even gone back to work? The average person that funded that stadium could not even attend. Right. And uh, to hire you, says my grandpa uh, said football was fixed for years before it came out. Yeah, I believe so, too. Just like boxing and a lot of other things. And teacher says Los Angeles traffic is disrespectful. Laugh out loud. It's beyond disrespectful. I mean, and it's one of the reasons why I hate to go back to visit in California because the traffic is and not even just Los Angeles. It's pretty much everywhere. Right. And Marty says they're fixing up all of downtown Detroit. Yet when you go into the neighborhoods that's far outside the outskirts of downtown Detroit, ain't nothing getting done. I had a city council uh, person and Al says, "Do you think the stadium was built knowing they were going to host the Super Bowl?" Yes, yes. Think about it. Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin, will never host the Super Bowl. You want to know why? It's a small town. It's publicly owned stadium. Uh, there's not a lot of amenities around the Super Bowl, so they'll never get one. There's certain stadiums in the NFL, Al, that will never host the Super Bowl. Uh, LA went without a stadium for over 21 years. So now that they had it, and this is the second actual team that actually played the Super Bowl in their hometown and won. Tampa Bay was the first. The Rams now are the second. And look at the money 
This is the second biggest market next to New York. Look how much money was generated in just one day, much less the uh, buildup to the Super Bowl. How much money was generated? It's going to be in Arizona next week. And uh, Mona says that I mean, Las Vegas. You mean Las Vegas? No, I think it's, I think it's going to be in Arizona. Las Vegas. Is it? Raiders. Look, Las look Vegas. It up. Look it up. And I'm going to say that our city council person uh, today make it be known that if you're not Hispanic while she is newly appointed to the southwest area, you basically is not going to get a lot of your requests heard or no action. So and that's the problem. <laughs> Teacher says, go ahead, Donovan, laugh out loud. And Tahiri says, we love and appreciate you this Valentine's and every day. Absolutely. Like, Valentine's is every day. Like, you know, a lot of people are running around today loving on everybody else. And the last person they loved was themselves. Hmm. Well, I, I read something on one of my uh, somebody's pages that they said that Valentine's should be uh, a regular day if you're getting loved every day like you're supposed to. It's a money hustle. <laughs> um, and David says $50,000 for a ticket. You can purchase a brand new fully loaded car truck for less than $50,000. Good God. Yeah, that's how much they were paying for those tickets. And Allie says the Bengals were staying uh, at the hotel closest to UCLA, which was about 30 minutes from LA. I don't know which uh, hotel that is. Yeah, I, I used to call them the Bungles. <laughs> the oh. Bengals are the Bungles. <laughs> yes, and Money says, I certainly, uh, I'm certainly not in California, but I wouldn't vote for Auntie Maxine, good communicator. I want to give that to her, but I don't expect much from her. Um, then she did the most, saying she's going um, um, gonna to do riots of the 90s. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and, and speaking of which, let's just uh, uh, pivot for just a second. Jim Clyburn came out uh, today and he said that he is writing a bill after he gave that Indian tribe that hunted down black slaves, fugitive slaves. He is championing a bill to make lift every voice and sing a national anthem because, you know, that's how important it is that uh, we do something for black people. So that's what he's going to do. Um, I sent that to some people. And they were like, how disrespectful. I mean, that shows you how out of touch these people are. Are you going to make it to do what now? It's going to be like an alternate national anthem. See, because black people, we love symbolism. So by having a black national anthem next to the white national anthem, we should feel good about ourselves. And just by a show of hands, right? How many people are in here actually even know all of the words to the Negro national anthem? I only know, lift every voice and sing. That's the only part I know. I had, you know, I, I had to fake it one time. I was at some event, and they had all the black people come up to the front and stand and sing it, and I was just lip syncing away. <laughs> yes. So I don't know. I mean, whatever. So where did I go? So more uh, symbolism from the uh, Jim Clyburn, 83-year-old 83, 83 uh, Jim Fish Fry Clyburn. <laughs> Thunder says I went to uh, go buy groceries and my cart was nowhere near full and it was about three hundred dollars. Deflation is getting ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I, trust me, brother. I know. I, I've gone to the store and I'm like, a hundred dollars for what? What did I get? <laughs> Um, but then I eat a little bit more on the healthier side too. So I don't go buying Cheetos and things like that, you know, so, and I try to go as organic as possible because I want to put good things in my body. Al says, what's the damn point of LA keeping the form when LA has the crypto center? Okay. Well, that, well that, that's a good question. Why they're keeping the form is that is a, uh, venue for lower acts and like second class acts, you know, because to rent the farm or the crypto center costs a lot of money. So by keeping the farm, you could put lower venue type things there and kind of keep things going because a lot of people can't afford to go into the uh, crypto center because of the different. That's like high class. Then you got the second tier. I've been at a concert or two with the crypto uh, it used to be staple center and it was horrible. I, I didn't I didn't like it. So I don't know. I Kiki says, yep, I was reading earlier that Biden's approval numbers are in the dirt, especially with black voters. But had they listened, they wouldn't uh, be having buyer's remorse. The only thing that shocks me is that they were expecting something different. Yeah, well, it's like, <sighs> well here, here's the thing, Kiki. The Democrats can save themselves by starting to write legislation right now. That's all they have to do is start writing the legislation. And they're not doing it. We can't even get a study. We can't even get a study. But they gave 
uh, all that money to the LGBTQ question, if you guys were on my page, where was their study? Where was their study? How come they didn't have to study that? But we got to study ours. Cut right. the check. And they cut the check for the LGBTQ immediately. Thunder says, I was thinking about the island in uh, the Carolinas where the Gullah people are and they're losing their homes. They were um, at a tax auction where they're opening bid on the opening bid of some of those homes were $1,800. Yeah. Of course, we know those are uh, some of the people um, that still have roots from um, slavery and, you know, from wherever they came in Africa. And yeah, it's sad what's going on with them. I've actually saw a documentary on that as well. And they're eminent domaining a lot of those, that area, just taking it from where all that rich culture and history um, is there. They don't care. They want to run freeways and stuff right through. Yeah, and, um, and they want to make resort areas and stuff like that because it's lucrative land. It's lucrative. Right. And so uh, you also say, um, and we're doing that bad. We are losing our homes for $2,000 worth of taxes. Yeah, people aren't educated on that. Yeah, you might own the house and grandmama gave it to you, but you don't own the land. You got to pay the taxes on that. And so, yeah, they're at the auction. The houses are on auction block, you know. And so uh, I think Donovan froze. It wasn't. Did I freeze? Uh, and Teacher says exactly, but they uh, voted blue no matter who. Now they're silent. Yeah, you can't find them anywhere. So I don't know if that's you, Donovan, that's frozen or me, but I'm going to keep going. And uh, Al says the Super Bowl will be in Phoenix next year, Vegas the following, and New Orleans in 2025. Uh, so that's what I thought it was going to be in um, Arizona. Uh, Donovan, are you, are you there? Are you there? And teacher says, F a song, cut the damn check. Absolutely. That just says symbolism again. And Ironwork, uh, 92,000. How are you doing? He says, till earth and heaven ring. Okay, so that's the other part of the song. And, and I'm going to be a funny. I really um, don't know too, uh, the, all of the lyrics. I just, you know, know that part. Yeah, that was Donovan. I didn't think it was me. And uh, Leather Luxury Car says, I don't know that. And Jackie Brown, how you doing? You know, I like the name, and that was my mom's favorite movie, Jackie Brown. He says, but that's sad. And Thunder says, um, hell, how many of us even know we have an anthem? Exactly. And uh, uh, Chani, how you doing? He says, what's up, good people? And teacher says, I will uh, mess up the words to Mary Had a Little Lamb. I damn sure do not know all the words to lift every voice. Yeah, and a, and a lot of people just don't. And <laughs> Jazz, how you doing? Lip syncing, I was. They was like, hey, everybody come up here and sing the, you know, the, the Negro National Anthem. Uh, it, it lift every voice or whatever. And I was like, saying the first part, and then I was just... <laughs> I don't think they knew. And Al says, each time the voices lift up and sing, I want to sit down and shit. You stupid. <laughs> Tisha, you say they don't want to do it. We saw that in the last six years of the Obama administration. Nah, they, they'll they act like it. And now they're not even really acting like it, right? And uh, Thunder says, yeah, the hole is on the auction block. Uh, but you're telling me with uh, within a family of 35 to 40 people, everybody can chip in and come up with $2,000 uh, to save the house. This makes us look very bad. Well, in a lot of cases, they can't come up with the $2,000, but in a lot of cases, well, you know, then um, I, I want to have some say so. Well, then, you know, I want to live in it. Well, you can't live in a house. You know, that was I, it, it be all of that. And it, it just goes to, you know, to hell. And so, unfortunately, a lot of times we lose the house because we can't get along, right? And Al says, each time the voice lift up and sing, I want to say, I got you. <laughs> and uh, Tahiri says, it's all um, white people in power. White people would never give up being white. Only a few, I mean, a few outliers would do anything. Does not matter the party, where they live, rich or poor. Absolutely. And Thunder says, yes, the house is on the auction block for $2,000. You have a family, th uh, 30 to 40 people, and collectively they can come up with 2000 to save this piece of history. This makes us look very bad. Yeah, sometimes they can and sometimes they can't, but a lot of times it has to do with infighting. I don't want you to have a house and, you know, well, I want to say so. Or, you know, well, if I put the money in, we need to sell it and just, you know, divvy up the money with everybody instead of saying, hey, this is history. Great grandmama and them, you know, work very hard to have this property and we need to preserve it and keep it in the family. Right. But we, we don't really think about it like that. And Chani says, I had a black mama musician and had to know all the words. Well, yeah, that that's a different story right there. <laughs> and Gerard, how you doing? He says, 
It's better than the Star Spangled Banner song, though. Um, I mean, I, I kind of know what the words say and stuff. I just can't. I, but admittedly, I'm bad at lyrics, right? I'm, I'm good with the melody, but lyrics, unless it's like a very easy song or something, I, I, I just don't know. And uh, Robin says, especially if it's um, air, property, and land. Uh, yes, indeed. And Reggie, how you doing? He says, greetings, Demetri and Global Back Climbing. Donovan was on here, but he, his internet, I think, is acting up or something. I think Maxine Waters probably shut off his internet because he'd be talking crazy about it. <laughs> but I'm sure he'll be back. And uh, how you doing, Deadshot? And H. McDaniels, how you doing? He says, I only watched a halftime show. The stadium was packed with fans and spectators. Who are these people with that kind of money? I complain when I pay $20 for, uh, to a local festival. I'm freaking believable. You know what? You raise a very good point.